<laughs> let's let's talk a little bit in the background. So after after the podcast is done or after we do an, an advertising push on social media, we have that raw material. Now you have to start doing content creation. Walk us through that a little bit. What what does that look like on the background? So we have the raw file, the raw episode file. Okay. Now we're just like, okay, let's say the podcast is 30 minutes long. Mm-hmm. How many clips can we get that are good, solid golden nuggets mm-hmm. that we can repurpose on social media? For the most part, let's say for 30 minutes, you get between 15 and 20 different clips that you can use. Okay. That is 20, 15 to 20 different like commercials mm-hmm. for your personal brand right there. Okay. Just off one podcast. So now multiply that times every single episode that you've done. That's instantly scalable for your business right there and your personal brand. I'm trying to do math right now. (laughs) It's a lot of content. It's a lot of content. It's a lot of content. Let's put it that way. It's a lot of content. And, you know, people click with some messages. Some people click with other messages. You know, there's always you've had some that popped off and had a whole bunch of like uh, comments on there. A lot of likes, a lot of shares, a lot of saves. That's the stuff that really clicks. It's like, okay, how can we repurpose that mm-hmm. and create carousels, create books from it? How can we even like spin off it and do another podcast off of that? Gotcha. So it's like multiple ways that you can like use that data and just like, hey, I'm going to do another podcast based off just this. And uh, yeah, I mean, you've had like on Instagram, a few that popped off on YouTube, especially like the mm-hmm. shorts have popped off completely. And like, that's great. We're like, we'd love to see that. Yeah, like, no, oh, yeah, well. it's working. <laughs> yep. It does work. It does work well. You get, her, you get her name out there. And I guess you get the brand out there. It's so funny when I hear a brand, I instantly think of like Nike or mm-hmm. Gap or something. You see a brand, there's money or clothing behind it. And before, for this brand, it's just trying to help. You you're know, just it's trying just, to help. just trying to help, trying to get a leg up. There's but no money behind this. The cool it's thing, though, it's like nice. your, your mindset on how you run things is also how you run your business. So that's why people are related to you or relatable to you in that sense, because they're like, if he cares so much about what he's talking about and it shows in his business, of course, I'm going to want to use his business for my company because it shows that you care and it shows that you put a lot of effort into it to, you know, scale your own business. You know, it's funny. We just had uh, this happened just yesterday. Uh, A a gentleman, his name's Gus, works for me here at the sign company, and he's been with us for four or five months. And when he came in, he was a hard worker, but he didn't have any tools. And usually when I see people come in without any tools, it kind of tells me they're a short timer. You know, they're not really trying to pl- uh, grow roots. And he, he didn't leave. He was always here. Uh, I think the first week he had one absence. And, you know, in the first week, you're kind of like, well, okay, what's going on? But after that, that was really good. Good worker, great guy. He came in yesterday and he was offered a mining position at a mine. Like, no joke. Like you see in the early 1900s, yeah. like, go inside the earth and find something and bring it back out. And it pays very well because it's very dangerous. We've seen enough movies. We know the danger factor of a mining. But he just goes, I, I have to because I can't turn up the money. And I was like, hit it. And he goes, but I love working here so much. He goes, I want to tell you, I've had a lot of jobs. And I love working here. Everybody's happy. They just want to get the job done. No one's cranky. He goes, if you're, it's okay with you when I'm not working in the mines, can I come back here and work? And I said, let's, let's play by ear. Let's find out. Let's just find out. I'm not going to say no, because if you can fill in and help out and we're busy and whatnot, that's great. If it doesn't work, then we'll talk about that later. But the fact that he took the time to say that when he's only been here for four months, that was special to me. That was really nice to say, okay, we are doing something right. That goes to the podcast you recorded about the company culture. <laughs> the company culture is, I mean, I've seen it. I've been in your business. I'm here in, in the studio and all that. I've seen it and people are happy here. Yeah, You know, I've seen the colors that you've built like uh, throughout the whole warehouse. You know, people have fun here. They love it. It's it's a great company that you've built. And that goes to show that the company culture that you've been able to create with your company. And for someone that's only been here for four months that wants to continue staying, even though he has a better offer somewhere else. Yeah, like, that's, that's pretty neat. Yeah, that's amazing. That's a testament to what your mindset is when it comes to scaling your business and having that company culture for your employees. That it's not just like a, a money creating business for you. Mm-hmm. It's like, no, I want to build that company culture because I want to scale this for life, you know, yeah. or a legacy. No, I, it, it was, it was it kind of a humbling moment in all honesty. It really was. It was neat to see all that. But with that, with that culture that you have there and it, that really is your job. So once I build that culture and I have it and it's just this baby, you know, and, you, and, you, and it is a baby, you're always constantly doing this to make sure the culture's right. Always. You know, somebody's <laughs> not mad or somebody's happy for there. The clients are just amount of pissed off and the employees are just amount of pissed off. You got, you got that perfect culture there. How do you 
relay that or show that or visualize that in your content creation? Oh, man. I mean, are you happy creating the content? Do you like the nuggets that you post on already on social media? Like when you say and you have so much passion, you can tell the passion behind it when you were saying that message. So it shows on your social media and that's how the people connect to it. Like they don't have to see like they don't have to show up to your warehouse and be like, I need to see for myself how this company culture works for him. Yeah, They can sense it already based on your stories, based on your messaging already on social media. All right. I, I, <laughs> great answer. I like it. Didn't see that one coming, <laughs> but it's true. No, again, it kind of shows you see it through your work. It yeah, they really do. It's not something that, and that, that's a testament to you as well, because my first ones on social media before I got involved with you were very just me talking and that was it. Now we have cover pages, we have different colors, we have excitement, we have this. Um, I think we don't really do clickbait on my stuff, but I think we did one or two just for giggles. Yeah. Uh, I think there was one with me and Dr. Warner where it looks like we're at war. Yeah. Uh, which was funny because a lot of people clicked on it, but we're not. We're having a great time and having a good conversation. <laughs> you but guys were laughing the whole time. Yeah. We were. It was a good time. 